Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Toolkit RC M6D Dual Smart Charger, a palm-sized DC battery charger that will enable you to charge two batteries simultaneously, sports up some pretty impressive specs, and comes with a relatively low price tag of $65. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the M6D charger you can find a USB to USB cable that will enable you to update the firmware of the charger using a computer and a quick start guide. In addition, a very detailed user manual is available online and you can find a link to it in the description of this video. In terms of features and specs, on the back of the M6D charger you can find an XT60 battery connector and the USB port. The XT60 battery connector is used in order to power up the charger and the supported input voltage is between 7 to 28 volts and the USB port is used both for updating the firmware of the charger and for charging 5 volts USB devices at the maximum current rate of 2.1 amperes. On the top side of the charger, you can find a very bright and readable 2.4 inch color 320x240 LCD screen. And since this is not a touchscreen, navigating through the different options is done using the scroll wheel and the channel slash exit button. On the front side of the charger, you can find two XT60 battery connectors and two balance ports that will enable you to charge up to two 6S batteries simultaneously. The maximum output power per channel in async mode is 15 ampere or 250 watts. And in synchronized mode, the maximum output power for both channels together is 25 ampere or 500 watts. In addition, between the two XT60 battery connectors covered by this plastic part, you can find a port for connecting an external temperature sensor which is not included. On its bottom side, you can find rubber grips in order to keep it steady, and on its sides, a pretty powerful fan and big ventilation holes in order to keep it cool. In terms of dimensions, the M6D charger is very compact, and here you can see how it looks next to the M8S charger. The dimensions are very similar, and the weight of the M6D charger is 223.6 grams, so it's about 50 grams heavier than the M8S. Here you can see what it looks like after turning on the charger, and in case you are familiar with previous Toolkit of C chargers, you probably noticed that the user interface is now different. On the top side of the main screen, you can find the input power voltage, current, and total consumption power, the internal battery temperature, and the status of the fan. In case the internal temperature of the charger is going to reach 45 degrees Celsius, the fan is going to be turned on on half speed, and in case it's going to reach 53 degrees Celsius, it's going to switch to full power. On the left side of the screen, you can see the information regarding the battery which is connected to channel 1, and on the right side to channel 2. You can switch between the channels by short pressing the channel button and move between the views by scrolling the scroll wheel. After connecting the battery, you'll be able to monitor its total voltage and the voltage per cell. And by the way, you probably noticed that over here, even though no battery is connected to channel 1, it shows 0.02 volts, and I double checked it with Toolkit RC, and they told me that this information is caused by the residual voltage of the internal capacitor, and it doesn't indicate that the charger is not calibrated. In case you do want to calibrate it however, you can do so by powering up the charger while pressing the scroll wheel button. In order to charge a battery, first select the channel that you would like to use, then short press the scroll wheel button, and then under battery selection you can either use an existing configuration or define a new one. First you need to set the battery type, you can set it to one of the following options, and in addition you can also set it to power mode and then the charger is going to act as a power supply. The number of battery cells can be either detected automatically or you can define them manually. The mode can be set either to charge, discharge or storage charge. You can change the end voltage depending on the battery type and the charge current goes all the way down to 0.1 ampere and all the way up to 15 amperes on async mode or all the way up to 25 amperes in synchronized mode. If the mode is set to discharge, you'll be able to set the discharge mode either to internally or recycle as long as the power type is set to battery. If you select the internal discharge mode, the connected battery is going to be discharged by an internal consumption heat of the charger and it's going to be limited to 12 volts or 3 amperes even though it's not reflected in the discharge current settings. If you select the recycle discharge mode, the energy which is going to be drawn from the connected battery is going to be used in order to charge the connected battery which powers up the charger. The discharge current is going to be limited to 15 amperes or 250 watts, and in addition you can also set the input maximum voltage in order to not overcharge the connected battery. 
In addition, in both cases, you'll be able to set the end voltage of the connected battery, which is going to be discharged. In case you're going to set the mode to storage charge, you're going to see a combination of the other two modes. After configuring the different options, you can switch between the different channels, and you can also enter dual mode, and then both channels are going to be charged using the same settings, which can be quite convenient. And after selecting the start option and confirming the end voltage per channel, the charging procedure is going to start. While a battery is being charged, you'll be able to change the current setting and stop the charging procedure by short pressing the scroll wheel button. After charging a battery for about 5 seconds, you'll be able to see the resistance per cell, and if you'd like, you can also measure the cell resistance without charging the battery by long pressing the channel slash exit button. In order to enter the settings menu of the charger, you will need to long press the scroll wheel button. Then over here you can set the input settings, so you can set the power type either to battery or adapter. And the only difference between the two options is that if the power type is going to be set to adapter, you won't be able to select the recycle option while discharging the battery. The max power can be set up to 560 watts, and the lowest value is 10 watts. The max current can be set up to 30 amperes, and all the way down to 1 ampere. The voltage range can be adjusted as well. Under security settings, you can change these options. The synchronous mode can be turned on or off, and in a minute I'm going to discuss this option. You can turn on continuous work, and then the next battery which is connected to the charger is going to be charged using the same settings of the previous one. The work completed option can be set to trickle if you want to trickle charge your battery. You can also adjust the screen backlight. Adjust the tone of the buzzer or turn it off. Change the user interface language between the following options. And finally restore the charger to its original default settings. As for the synchronous mode, turning it on will enable you to use both channels together in order to achieve a maximum output power of 500 watts with a limit of 25 amperes instead of 15 amperes. And in order to use it, you will need to obtain this type of Y-shaped cable and connect both channels together in parallel. When synchronous mode is enabled, only channel number 1 is going to be available and channel number 2 is going to be grayed out, and in addition, you won't be able to use the charger as a power supply. As for the power supply option, once selected, you can set the output voltage between 1 and 28 volts, and the max current can be set between 0.5 to 15 amperes. Then after selecting the channel option, you can hit start, and as you can see, the second charger was powered up. When the power mode is enabled, you can change the current and voltage settings by short pressing the scroll wheel button, and under this menu, you can also stop it. In order to upgrade the firmware of the charger, connect it to your computer using the provided USB to USB cable. Then your computer is going to discover a new portable drive with the name Toolkit, and inside this drive, you can find the app.upga file. Once the firmware update is available on Toolkit's RC website, you can download it, and simply replace the app.upga file with the newly downloaded file. So overall, I think that the M6D Dual Smart Charger is a great, powerful, budget-friendly addition to the current line of chargers by Toolkit RC, and I think and hope that their next step should be releasing a similar ACDC product, as I think that if they can release a similar product with ACDC capabilities for a price of less than $100, they will definitely have a best seller. That's going to be it for my review of the Toolkit RC M6D Dual DC Charger. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.